Welcome to episode four of the iTech Show. For those unfamiliar, the iTech Show was created out of a need for some high quality video content about Israeli tech. For years, many people in the ecosystem have said, everybody's talking about Israeli tech, the press is writing about the Israeli tech, but what happens if I wanna meet the people behind Israeli tech, see the faces? And so, rewind a couple of months, and I'm on my, doing my thing on Snapchat, and I, uh, and I said on Snapchat that someone has to create high quality video content about Israeli tech. And the Microsoft Israel R&D Center in Herzliya stepped up, and I got a message from Geva Tellem, who does digital marketing at the R&D Center, and said, we built a studio, let's do it. And so we've been doing an episode every couple of weeks, and the format of the show is 10 to 15 minutes of tech news, uh, of which we have a ridiculous amount today. Uh, 10 minute to 15 minute interview with an industry leader, of which we have an awesome one today. And a five to 10 minute interview with a startup, a new startup that you may not have heard of. And today we have an epic startup that you absolutely must know of. But wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're gonna start with some tech news and the truth is like every other episode, choosing the topics to talk about in, today, in this week's or the last two weeks tech news in Israel was very difficult because, you know, again, we're, we're a tiny little country, we're microscopic, we're the size of New Jersey, and um, not only is the funding and the capital flowing into this country like water, from all directions, by the way, locally, from the US, from China, from Asia, from everywhere, basically, uh, and not only are the rounds mega rounds, but it's very interesting to notice that they're across all verticals of technology and today's news is no different. We have from consumer to enterprise to big data to cyber, you name it, agriculture, everything. And uh, as I was telling our, our guests in the studio today, last night I was at a, an amazing investors dinner with some Asian investors and they were telling me how they saw a ridiculous amount of startups in the energy space and the automotive spaces and it's just not slowing down, it's phenomenal. And so sure enough today, the news is really phenomenal. Our crowd literally breaking news, maybe an hour ago it came out. Our crowd is, I think now, the, the world's largest equity crowdfunding platform. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you know, there's crowdfunding like Kickstarter, there's equity crowdfunding, which is instead of getting something physical in your hand, you get equity in a company. But if I'm a dentist and I don't necessarily have the ability to run a due diligence process on a company, or I don't have access to deal flow, Mr. Medved in our crowd will find you deals, do the due diligence, run it on his platform and raise capital for, you know, I think they've raised hundreds of startup capital in the last uh, couple of years since they launched in 2013. Today they announced a $72 million Series C for our crowd itself, which is phenomenal. They're in Jerusalem, even more phenomenal. They just opened up a Herzliya office. They're growing exponentially, as Mr. Medved himself said to the press, and it's really true. I'm, I'm watching them grow, and it's, it's phenomenal. That's just one piece of news from the last couple of weeks. Actually, half an hour ago, really just broke. Another company that's half American, half Israeli, Israeli founders is a company called Vroom, which is building a platform for buying cars online. They raised a whopping 50 big ones, $50 million. And so again, it's very important to notice, not only is there a lot of you know, um, funding, a lot of capital, a lot of money raised, but it's across all verticals, right? It's really phenomenal. Applause, a company that was once called Utest and rebranded to Applause, which is in the testing uh, space. So if you have an app or software of any kind, you need to test it, right? You know, let's talk specifically about one of the leading mobile ecosystems out there, Android. There's 5,000 different screen sizes, processors, different versions of Android. You need a test, and you can't possibly have a product without testing. These guys are pretty much leading the space of testing, and so they announced a $30 million uh, round of financing. Really, the list is so long. I'm just going to give a couple of shout-outs to some companies that I, I truly love. Zekit, uh, who uh, their CEO, Yael Wiesel, is kind of a rock star. Uh, and so Zekit, what they do is they are aiming to replace... Um, the dressing room. And so you literally open their app using their te technology, you can actually build a wardrobe and it, it puts it on you and it looks, and it's hard to believe like, you know, how natural could that possibly look? But she demoed it to me a couple of months ago. Completely accurate and realistic and you really could now actually buy things online and not worry about getting them and having to return them because they don't fit you like you wanted them to fit you. Phenomenal company, unbelievable technology. Another company that raised, oh, so uh, Zeke had raised $9 million. Uh, and this is you know, a follow-on round. They've already raised capital in the past. Prove, a company that is making phenomenal waves in the world because I think they solve a tremendous problem for both enterprises and startups. Think about this. If you're a startup, what's your biggest dream? Your biggest dream is to run a pilot with Nike, right? Or with AT&T, or with Microsoft, or with any enterprise. If you're Nike, you also want to work with innovative startups. But how do they find each other? Even after they find each other, how do they actually run this pilot? And even after they start running it, they gotta test it, they gotta deploy it on production. It's a big headache and a huge barrier. And it's, you know, it's a win-win for both sides if they can get this thing right. Prove, 
end to end. They call it pilot as a service. They take care of all your needs. They have hundreds, hundreds of enterprises on their platform and they just launched, they raised $7 million. It's phenomenal, sensible. And I wanna, wanna emphasize again, different vertical, internet of things. Obviously everyone's talking about the internet of things. You know, if we're looking at kind of the hot spaces today in, in tech, we got VR, we got AR, we're at Microsoft R&D, obviously the HoloLens is leading, leading the way in AR. Uh, Sensibo is an internet of things and they basically take your air conditioning and they make it into a smart device. So that's really interesting. They raised $2 million. The list literally just continues going, Tipalti raised $14 million, Tango raised $8 million. It, it just goes on and on. It's really very interesting. And that's on the, uh, that's on the funding side. Uh, I just wanna say kind of one um, statistic that I think might blow your mind. So sit down for this one. Remember, Israel, the size of New Jersey. Not only are we the size of New Jersey, but to say that we have regional challenges would be the understatement of the century, right? I mean, we don't live in exactly the most stable region on earth and we have, we have our challenges here. And we have every excuse in the book to sit back and chill and be like, whatever, I'm not changing the world, but we're not. Are you ready for this? Since January, 2016, Israeli startups, Israeli companies, I should say, have raised, sit down, $3.5 billion in capital, with a B. Crazy, yeah, round of applause, everyone, yeah. No, but really, I guess you need to, you need to put it in the right perspective, the right context, it's crazy. $3.5 billion, and we're gonna to talk to our guests today a little bit, uh, in a little bit about how that compares to other ecosystems in the world, maybe Silicon Valley and, and Europe and other things, we'll talk about it, but objectively speaking, 3.5, can you imagine New Jersey companies raising $3.5 billion? Since January 2016, obviously not. It's crazy, it's wild and it's not slowing down. That's another thing that's really interesting. Every time you break these records, the press, the world, everyone's like, this is not sustainable. You cannot keep this up. And sure enough, comes along the next quarter, boom, we broke that record. $3.5 billion since January 2016, wild. We got funding, we got breaking records, we got you know acquisitions. On the acquisition side, CA Technologies acquires Israeli startup BlazeMeter for $90 million, right? It's not slowing down. You got all the biggest companies here in Israel, R&D centers of, of them all, right? Again, we're in Microsoft R&D. We got the Googles, we got the Intels, we got, the, we got them all. They're all here on the ground building core elements of their technology. You know, if we're talking Google, they're building core elements of Android, of search here in Tel Aviv. It, well, we're in Herzliya now, but here in Israel. It's phenomenal. And we're seeing acquisitions across the board. Um, we got Amdocs buys three digital startups for 260 million, including an Israeli startup, Pontus for $90 million. The acquisitions are just pouring in. We got you know, a lot of different deals being closed for Israeli companies with some of the leading companies in tech. We got tons of funding, exciting times, and it's not slowing down. So that's what we got in terms of tech. Uh, we got- Maybe share the post again from your own profile, so they did it from the iPad profile. So do it every week. Okay, well I am, I'm told that I need to share my post one more time because it did not share to my profile, so I'm gonna do that. This is the nature of live video. You know, it's early days, and uh, you'll forgive me for doing this while we're on the air, but you know, people wanna know about this show, and so I'm, I'm gonna be doing this live. So that's what we got uh, in terms of, of tech, and I wanna talk about our, our guest that I'm gonna be interviewing today. Um, there are phenomenal innovators in our industry in Israel, uh, from you know, entrepreneurs to investors, and there's one element of the ecosystem that is, again, completely disproportional to the size of this country and, again, not slowing down. And that is the accelerators in this country. I don't know the exact number. There's got to be tens, if not hundreds, if not, I don't even know how many. So many. But there's one that stands out, and that's an objective fact. I don't think that there's anybody who disputes the fact that the Microsoft Accelerator is number one in Israel, and maybe even in the world. They started here in Israel. Uh, I was fortunate enough, I am fortunate enough to be a, a, a mentor at the Microsoft Accelerator. I apologize again, I'm just sharing this here from, uh, from my own uh, specific uh, profile as opposed to iTech. Um, so the accelerators, Microsoft Accelerator has some phenomenal companies in its pipeline, or I should say backwards pipeline, I don't even know what that's called, but the, the companies that went through the Microsoft Accelerator, again, all verticals of technology, and in terms of follow-on rounds, there's no one that even comes close to Microsoft. We've had some really, really phenomenal companies that I was fortunate enough to mentor and to meet through the Accelerator. One of them, by the way, is the company we'll be interviewing today as well. Uh, and the man who runs it all, who runs the whole show, is a friend and somebody I learn from a lot. And I'm gonna stop praising him because he might hurt me. He's a lot bigger than me and stronger than me. Zach Weisfeld. Uh, everyone knows him in the ecosystem. If you're watching from outside of Israel, you may not have heard of him because he kind of, he's a doer. He doesn't make a lot of noise. He's a humble guy. I'm sorry, Zach. But the bottom line is he runs the show here and we are fortunate enough to have him in our studio today. Welcome, Zach. Thank you very much. 
It's uh, definitely encouraging words about what's happening in this ecosystem. And uh, um, as you said, I'm privileged enough to see what's going on in other places. So um, just a few words maybe on the Microsoft Accelerator. Yes, please. So a program that we've started out of here, out of Israel, it's an Israel innovation. Um, against the laws, no one thought that makes sense for us to start an accelerator. As you said, there were many, many accelerators already existing around the world. And um, we started in April 2012. Um, so we're four and a half years since then. We have uh, almost 520 graduates. Wow. Um, they raised, um, now you should sit down. I am sitting down. They raised uh, altogether about $2 billion. So we just crossed the $2 billion mark. Wait, 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 wait. I, gotta, I gotta stop here all that. The Microsoft Accelerator alone. The startups in the Microsoft Accelerator program. $2 billion. Have raised, not valuations, what they right. raised because uh, clearly valuations are much higher. Much, than much that. higher, right. Uh, they raised uh, $2 billion of 80, uh, one percent of them are funded. Um, average funding is four point six million dollars. Median is about a million. Um, that is phenomenal. And uh, what else? Thirty-seven acquisitions through thir thirty-seven exits through acquisition, three through IPOs. Um, Could you, well, you got to repeat that for me. I'm sorry. So thirty-seven exits through acquisitions, three through IPOs. So if we were if we were a fund, I think our our um, our results have been pretty phenomenal. How do you explain it? And, and if you look at accelerators, so if you look at the 10 top accelerators in the US, they, they average 59% follow-on funding, about $1.7 million, about 2% um, exit. So uh, the results have been, have been pretty good. Um, and we had some, some companies that um, really made it big. But overall, overall, the portfolio is doing, is doing well. And what's, what's interesting, um, is that we move to a bit of a different place in the so you talk about accelerators so there are plenty there's tons of accelerators right there's new accelerators like a new accelerator every day right so we figured out there are a lot of people that can teach you lean startup methodologies and you know the contests and how to do all these things and and, uh, and that's great some of the schools are better some of the schools are not as good but but they're general a lot of these kind of schools and we figure out we can leverage what Microsoft has, which is a very unique connection to the business, um, the other businesses there, other enterprises there, to help the startups be even more successful. So if you look at, at our new cohorts, we moved to more of a Series A company. So in the last year, we've, we've completed the move to what we call the Scalarator. We're looking for a better name, if anyone has a better name. I just want to put an official request, if I may, for that t-shirt. Okay. Excel, please. Okay, yeah, please we'll, continue. We'll work on that. Um, so um, we moved to a, a bit of a different stage. So if you look at the core that just started two weeks ago in Seattle, in our, so we'll be back for a second. So we run programs now in Bangalore, Beijing, Berlin, London, Paris, uh, Seattle, and Tel Aviv. Uh, we're gonna announce more programs uh, in the near future. Um, and as I said, going pretty well. So as we move to, to this later stage, and we move, I think a lot of the, this phenomenon of accelerators it's trying to figure out what, what its next big thing. Uh, so we call it this, this scalerator is this uh, helping companies scale and grow. So if you look at the cohort that just started in Seattle, the average funding of the company's pre-class uh, is $5.6 million. Okay. Um, and average uh, ARR is around $3 million. Okay. If you look at the cohort that just started this week in Tel Aviv, average funding pre-accelerator is $2.2 million. And some of them already pumping in $2 million of revenue. No way. So, so it's, it's a great set of companies that what we do with them is we mostly work with them on go-to-market, on customer access, a lot of customer interactions, um, and really work with the CEO on how to grow a company, how to, to uh, manage their board, manage their VCs. Uh, most of these companies, their CEOs are first-time CEOs, second-time CEOs. Uh, still the loneliest position to be in. So... We're there to, to help them go through and build a successful uh, growth stage company. Interesting. Okay, so, I mean, you, you obviously, on a personal level, bring a lot of experience. Give me, in a minute and a half, your background, your experience, and what you bring to the table. So... Uh, Sell yourself, Zach. I, I, I hope <laughs> my mother is watching. Um, so, I'm, the way I usually look at myself as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur for the last 20 somewhat years, being someone here at Microsoft, what are you talking about? So I've, I've been a corporate entrepreneur as well. This is my third time at Microsoft. Uh, I've spent about eight years in Silicon Valley. 
um, uh, running a few companies that probably a lot of people here know. Uh, I was uh, uh, running a division for Comtouch uh, in the Valley. I was running M System Americas before the acquisition um, by Sandisk. Um, I, mean, I apologize for interrupting you. Just so you, whoever doesn't isn't familiar, M System is the company that invented the thumb drive that we all basically they revolutionized USB. They I would say invented USB even. Um, and sold it to SanDisk, but all the thumb drives that we use, that was M Systems, of course, Israeli technology. So sold one point six billion dollars to SanDisk. I thought it was more than that. One point six. Yeah. So um, then later on, joined Dovmoran again with Modu. So I was running everything uh, other than uh, R and D and operations in that company. I'm still a founder of a Sequoia-backed startup uh, called Mintigo. Um, so, so I've been doing startups as well as uh, living the corporate world. You'll, you'll forgive me, Zach. Right? We're gonna start, if I keep oh, interrupting, you're going to forgive me. Sure, Modu, Modu was, if I ever heard of a company that was ahead of its time, it was Modu. Modu was modular cell phones, right? Yeah. Project Ara, these are ha things that are happening. The LG G5, modular cell phones. Modu, Modu Dove Moran, who invented the thumb drive, thought of this idea how many years yeah. ago? Yeah, so we're talking about 2007. Ahead of its time. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, uh, um, and then, um, as I said, third time in Microsoft, so I rejoined about six years ago. A long time ago, and and uh, decided to help Microsoft reinvent the, the way we deal with entrepreneurs. So that's roughly what I've done. So what's in it for Microsoft? Uh, it's funny you ask. Uh, people uh, people often ask that question um, because we don't take equity in the program, right? And and, and that's we, unique. And we invest a lot of efforts in these startups. What's what's interesting? What happened to us in a very, very short period of time? We became very relevant again in the in, in these startup ecosystems and working with early stage uh, entrepreneurs. So the program just won the fourth year in a row uh, an award in China for being the most admirable accelerator program in China. So this is out of eighteen hundred programs, right? Wow! Um, by this C Invest, I think C Invest, which is the, the big uh, China investment forum, uh, uh, Fortune named us the number one ecosystem builder in India. Um, I think Geek Time, which is our great uh, local... Um, we love Geek Time. Absolutely. So I think we, we won their, their award uh, for the last couple of years. So we have helped Microsoft get back in the game and working with entrepreneurs that are changing the world. And we're going to hear about one later on, but uh, really great entrepreneurs building big companies. So this was one thing. The first thing we want to do is bring Microsoft back to that conversation. The second thing is... Microsoft is a services company now, and we used to be a packet software company, and we need the feedback loop for, from uh, the best companies out there. Our big enterprise customers, they're not adopting at the same pace for releasing new services. So our ability to work with these young, super aggressive startups that would take whatever you're gonna throw at them if it's free, and if you're gonna help them get on board it and, and work with them closely, then they'll, uh, they'll usually give you real feedback on that. So yeah. these are the things that we've been, uh, we've been driving. Uh, the other interesting thing that we've started figuring out is we're getting 10,000 applications a year wow. across the world. We only accept about 2% of those to work with. In the well, that explains your success, right? Yeah, but, but you know, we, get, we get really the best uh, right. deal flow out there. So our ability to sit on top of some of the most interesting global trends, technology trends, is close to, to uh, I'm, I'm not sure there are many other programs that have that kind of Unprecedented, uh, unprecedented. All right, very cool. Listen, we, we're, we're nearing the end of this interview and I wanted to ask you as a person that has a very, very wide perspective and lens on what's happening here in Israel, what are you seeing? How, how is this ecosystem changing? What do you uh, predict over the next couple of years? Talk to me about trends. So first of all, it's, it's interesting to see what's happened in the last, uh, you, you, you named the statistics for Israel because when you talk to the VCs here, at the end of 2015, they were not that sure that this year was going to be that strong because they were looking at what's starting to happen in, in, um, in the valley, which we all know the valley went through a, a bit of a correction. Um, yeah, a correction, yes. And, and but but Israel kept being strong, and we're in this very unique position that valuations are still reasonable, and we have a lot of interesting investors that not always exist in the valley. Um, and investing their money in Israeli companies. So we kept a very unique position in that. If you look what happened to London, which is maybe the closest place for us as, as funding opportunities in, in the region or in Europe. Um, I think uh, I, I just met, I was in London for 24 hours yesterday, and I met a friend that uh, raised a fund. What he said, a lot of the, the potential LPs 
pulled out because of Brexit, wow. which which made a big uh, impact on on London. So Israel is positioned positioned extremely well. Um, the other thing that is interesting, uh, corporates like us and others are sitting on, on so much cash that need to be deployed. Yeah, I think, uh, sorry for interrupting you, okay. but I think that, you know, maybe if you look back a couple of years, Israeli entrepreneurs were somewhat frustrated, one might say, with lower valuations than in the Valley. And I think that it's interesting. Now it's boomeranging because the Valley's valuations that were much higher are kind of like crashing and burning a little bit now, correcting itself, while Israel, you know, was always conservative. So we're kind of just sticking at, you know, to our growth, which is... I think it's a good place to be right now. It's not, not easy markets. No, no, but, it's, but it's, it is a good, good place to be. And so you asked about trends. So I, I can just look at some of the things that we've, uh, we just, so we just accepted um, companies into the cohort in Tel Aviv, right? The new cohort that just started this week. And if you look at companies, there are companies that are, it's interesting, we have a company from, that's an IoT company, but not in terms of things, but in terms of trees. Trees? Yes, it's called Agritech, and oh, wow. sorry, uh, it's called um, Agrinet, Agrint, yeah. I think. And they, they're people coming from the intelligence core and, and taking their sensor capabilities into uh, uh, making sure palm trees are healthy. You have people doing automotive work, so Guardian uh, building a sensor, a very low cost sensor that helps uh, the people in the car to be much more, uh, you know, be safer. Uh, great technology goes into automotive space. Uh, you have uh, Equilum in the big data and IoT space. You have um, uh, InSounds, which is, uh, they deal with microphones and sounds, but it's really a big data company dealing with uh, making a better sound experience uh, in the world. You, you, have, you have a ton of really, uh, really interesting company. TaylorMed, we're going to have another healthcare company here. So computer vision, uh, machine learning for the use of better healthcare um, information. Uh, N2W with you know cloud protection management. So a lot of cybersecurity companies we see. So uh, we have Fenrir Seven in the cybersecurity space. We have Solabit uh, Labs in the cybersecurity space. Great, great companies with a great track record uh, coming in. We have Nuba with storage, Tonikin, which is uh, productivity boot bots, really helping you be much more productive. It's all about bots um, today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So, and, and Loom Systems, uh, which is, uh, makes IT operations uh, much more efficient, a great analytics system. So, great cohort, variety of areas that are super interesting, uh, super strong. Uh, interesting that we actually haven't seen much here in Israel, but a phenomenon that I've seen a lot uh, when I use selection uh, committees around the world, HR tech which has been really interesting lately. Companies in we the, had, in the uh, HR Woo. space. Woo was yeah, here we had Woo in the last round. Yeah. But in this, in this cohort, when we selected people in London, in the US, et cetera, had seen several companies in that space, which is really interesting. Marketing tech is back. You know, a lot of really, really interesting marketing tech companies. Absolutely. So, super, super exciting times. Um, and it's... Uh, it's not slowing down. Just getting started. Not at all. And, it's, and it's, it's globally. You see things, amazing things in India. China is booming. So I wanna, we have a question here from uh, Sipora, who uh, works at Home Talk, a company in Jerusalem. Okay. That is a phenomenal company you need to know about. I don't think they raise any external capital. They have ridiculous numbers. They're the, biggest, the world's biggest DIY platform. Anyway, she asked, can you elaborate your statement that we have interesting investors that aren't in the valley? I'm not, did you say that? Or did you, I, so I think that if you look at the mix of investors here, um, Yes, yeah, so there are investors here that are not in the valley, and there's an, an interesting opportunity. If you look at what we may call mid-size investors or funds, the opportunity to have it in Israel that they don't have in the valley is to lead rounds, for example, which in the valley it's almost impossible. If yeah. you're not one of the big guys, you can't really lead these rounds. Right. So, um, so I think we have a set of great investors locally that, that uh, are competing on the, local, on the local market. They have funds to, to deploy. Uh, definitely the phenomena of Chinese LPs coming in, in the market, to the market in the last uh, uh, few years has been a great blessing yep. for, for the local market. So, yes, there are a set of investors that exist here and doesn't exist in other places. I just want to give some shout outs here. We've got some phenomenal people here in the audience. We've got Farhan Rachman from New York. What time is it there? How do you? I don't understand. we got Racheli Fold, my uh, better half. Uh, we got Itamar Weisbrod from DeepLink.me, one of Israel's most interesting companies, in my humble opinion. Uh, Sipora, I said, from Home Talk. We got Dina from Toronto. Cedric from Switzerland, I think. Yeah, we got a global audience here. Your, your solos in here. We got some great people in here. And, um, you know, the bottom line is, obviously, we can talk about this for hours, uh, but 
what, from what you're seeing, do you think that we're going to see a slowdown? Do you think it's going to be continue? I mean, this is a crazy pace. We keep it up? Yeah, I don't see a slowdown. I don't see a slowdown. I think it's uh, the, everything we see right now, the, the quality of companies we saw in our Tel Aviv selection committee, which was two weeks ago, is just phenomenal. It was very, very hard for us to, to pick the, yeah, sure. the bunch, the, the 11 companies that started. Unbelievable. Well, Zach, keep doing what you're doing because the ecosystem depends on it. Thank you for everything. And uh, yeah, I mean, just keep it up. It's, it's, fun. it's actually, it makes, me, it makes me dizzy to watch. You guys are just kicking butt. It's really right. amazing. Keep it up. We'll, Thank we'll, you. We'll keep on doing that. All right, excellent. Thank We're going to now go to Thanks. our uh, next segment, which is a uh, startup spotlight. And I just give you a one-liner about the company that we're going to be meeting right now. Um, personal fanboy, what can I say? We got Ido uh, Engel in the studio, the CEO and founder of Wisdo. President. I'm sorry, president of Wisdo. It's very important, the title is super important. President of Wisdo.com, that's wisdom without an M. And uh, in, in one kind of one line, and you'll watch the video in a second, then I'll interview him. You know, there's knowledge, there's information, but wisdom's a different animal, right? Wisdom you get from experience, right? You experience things in life, and that experience is something that's super valuable. And if you could share that experience with people and let other people learn from it, that's a win-win. And so Wisdo, I mean, just wait till you hear about this company. I'll interview them in a minute. Watch this video. Enjoy. Great company. My name is Chris Baer. I live in Brooklyn, New York with my wife and two young girls, Vanessa, who's 11, and Charlotte, who's nine. Vanessa, about three years ago, was diagnosed with OCD. The obsession is the thing that you're concerned and have anxiety about, and the compulsion is the activity that you do to try to get down off that anxiety. Three years ago, Wisdo existed I think it probably would have been one of the resources I went to because there's a difference between what a book tells you as opposed to what somebody's gone through it will tell you, or somebody who's not the doctor will tell you. The best thing I think is you're mapping out what stages are going through, whether it's childhood OCD or parenthood, so people can see where I am now and they can see where I hope to go, and that's huge. My approach to adding it, an insight, advice, or a piece of wisdom was well, I wish I knew the fact that walking on eggshells is actually something you're not supposed to do. So I should probably add that like you're walking on eggshells and it's really like don't do this. In my head, when you get to the stage where we're in now, you need to give back to the people who are going through what you went through. So you become the advocate, you become wisdom. Not to tell people what to do, but to pass along advice so they don't make the same mistakes you make. It allows you to think in the, to the future in a positive way. My name is Chris Baer. I live in Brooklyn, New York with my You're wife. With Ido, and... the president of Wisdo.com. What can I say? I mean, I told you, I'm a fanboy because what they're doing, you know, there's a lot of companies out there doing cool stuff, maybe some cool technology. These guys, you know, and a lot of people say we're changing the world. We want to change the world. These guys are really changing the world. And I'm not talking about the privileged world. I'm talking about people that have life transitions and experiences that they need to cope with. And Sometimes maybe, sorry to get all sappy and whatever, sometimes you feel alone when you have a life transition, whether it's you know, moving apartments, going through, God forbid, a sickness, or anything else. And you know, when you're alone, it would be great to have someone to kind of lean on. Again, I apologize for being all sappy, but this is a sappy company. These guys are, you know, they, the first time I met with them, I had tears in my eyes. True or not true? I did. They told me a story, I had tears. Anyway, Ido, who are you? So I'm uh, Ido, president and co-founder of Wisdo. Um, I founded Wisdo with three other uh, co-founders. Um, Wisdo is headed by uh, our CEO, Boaz Gaon, um, who I came in touch with, and I just um, love the idea. Uh, we were born here in the Accelerator um, in Microsoft, so I want to say thank you to Zach, definitely an industry leader, and the numbers speak for themselves. And that's where we met. Indeed. That's where our romance began. Indeed. Bromance, uh, bromance, please. Bromance, sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like you said, uh, we are all about helping people take on life's challenges and opportunities. And the way we do that is, is like you said, um, is really by equipping these people with the wisdom of hindsight from those who've been there. Um, and so we launched our site 10 days ago. Um, wow, congrats. Thank you. It's the first uh, version of the site that's, uh, that's really launched. I know what went into that launch. I know that you, you've been yeah. working on it for a long yeah. time. It's got 170 verticals of, of life. Um, give, me give me some examples. 
so, you know, we've got three buckets, if you will, like everyone in life. If I look at you or anyone here, you know, um, take a snapshot of anyone you know. There's their health situation, their career situation, and their personal situation. I'm being told that people cannot hear you too well. All right. So let's try to adjust your mic, maybe bring it a little closer to you. Is that yeah, possible? Sure. Because people need to hear this. People said, um, I was reading about it before that. Yeah, uh, Tipor, they, I've been talking about Wisdo for like a year now on Snapchat. Yeah. I'm a big fan, as I said, but they officially launched 10 days ago. Um, some people are saying they can't hear you. Let me know now if you can hear Ido, because it is very important that you hear this story. It is a phenomenal story. Yeah. Continue, please. All right. Uh, so yeah, um, we launched with 170 uh, verticals. We're starting to get um, people who've been there uploading content, we're starting to guide people who are who need uh, the wisdom of hindsight in their life. Uh, I started talking about the three buckets, health, career, and, and personal life. So in health, it could be a diagnosis with a serious illness. That is where we started. Uh, it's something that you know uh, we experienced as caregivers and wanted to change. I want to interrupt yeah, you, sure. if I may. Sure. Because it really sticks with me, the things you told me the first time we met. Mm -hmm. You know, again, just to give one example among hundreds, literally, right? Someone, God forbid, is diagnosed with cancer. Now, of course, you know, they have to go through so much, not to mention the money and everything. It's just, but you know, the trivial things that could just make this experience that much easier, no one really tells you. You mentioned going to the dentist. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about that. So we started with breast cancer, of course, and uh, we started collecting um, you know, the information. And the first thing that we got was the path of how does the actual experience look like? We spoke to survivors. And uh, they said, you know, before uh, you go into chemo, you know, a month before, just go and see your dentist. And, you know, that certainly is something that you don't know you don't know, right? You would dentist. never, You would never Google that. Well, right. We asked why, and of course, uh, they tell us that uh, if you don't do that, you might lose your teeth that are, you know, that have a beginning of a cavity. Let me, let me interrupt you for one second, Ido. Um, we're getting feedback that Ido's mic isn't as loud as ours. So if we can uh, increase the volume on his mic, that would be good. Or speak up. Or yeah, come closer, man. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, listen, man. If you want me to come, to your mic. You can speak to mine. But speak yeah, up. Yeah. Speak up. Um, so yes, you know, we started getting the path. We got the actual map of the experience. We mapped breast cancer. That was our first pilot. Uh, and then we asked those wonderful women who who contributed. What do you wish you had known along the path? Amazing. And so you take people who are completely lost and, and unequipped, you know, all they have is Google and they can search what they know they need to search for. Uh, but you certainly, you know, in, what we give them is a map of the experience and at every given moment, they know what everyone who's been there, like them, wish they had known when they were there. One other thing that you said to me again back when we met was parking. Right? Mm -hmm. People that are going through chemotherapy in some certain states are entitled to free parking. Now, yeah. maybe one might think, free parking, that's what I have to worry about? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Why should you spend hundreds of dollars on parking if you have expenses of chemotherapy, right? Mm -hmm. But who tells you that? Who tells you that you have a right to have free parking? You're entitled to free parking? Who tells you that? Someone that's gone through it before. I remember a story you told me about well, your previous story with the dentist that you were sitting, correct me if I, if I got the details wrong, because it was a couple of months ago, but you were sitting in, a, in a, an investor meeting and one of them said, I wish I had known, and he had showed you that he had a missing tooth or something yeah. like that, yeah. that was caused by the chemo. Yeah. And there are things that you only learn from experience, and there's really no destination platform for me to share the wisdom of my experiences. And now there is wisdom. Tell me a little bit about the company itself. Yeah. I, the product, I think anybody, and I'm reading the comments so, here, everyone's like, wow. Yeah. You know? so, so the big idea is, you know, you've got, like you said, data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. We're at the top of the pyramid. Wisdom is the things that you don't know, you don't know. Um, and we're really trying to give a place to first capture everything and then access uh, wisdom. Uh, and we went out of the accelerator. We came here with the deck. Uh, Zach and the guys, um, you know, selected us and we got through. Uh, we came out equipped with a lot of, uh, of wisdom uh, and we went out um, uh, looking for a seed round. Uh, we found our investors in the Silicon Valley. I would say some of the titans of the Silicon Valley, uh, including uh, the seed investor of Amazon, the founding city of Oracle, founding city of Yahoo, uh, CEO of 23andMe, uh, the, you know, Bob Nelson, uh, the most successful biotech investor in the world. Hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. One more person that you got to mention. And who is the chairman of your company? And the chairman of our company is uh, famous Rick Klausner, who used to be the head of the National Cancer Institute. He was appointed by uh, President Clinton. Uh, then he was the head of the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Global Health Foundation. Uh, he later co-founded Juno, which IPO'd for uh, two billion, and now is at four billion. I, 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 again, you're gonna have to forgive me. I'm a little bit excited about what you're doing, so you forgive me for interrupting you. I had the opportunity to meet with Dr. Rick Klausner at your office a couple of months back, and I mean, the guy managed more 
money for cancer research than any other human being on planet Earth. The presidents of the United States of America came to Rick Klausner to cure cancer, right? Yeah. And he told them, you know, this is what I dedicate my life to. And he said to them, I can promise you, we'll do everything we can. And he left the National Cancer Institute to join WISDO. Yeah. Mind blown. Yeah. How, did, how did you pull that off? Uh, well, when he saw our pilot on breast cancer, he said, you know, I've been an oncologist and a biologist as well for 30 years, and I've never seen this. I've seen thousands of patients, um, and I've never seen a map of the experience. And I can tell you the experience was not clinical at all. It was all about the emotional, uh, you know, the psychological, financial, logistical, and communicational um, aspects of uh, several yeah. months ago, uh, we, ha we were fortunate enough to be at an event you put together um, with Dr. Klausner and Shimon Peres, you should get better soon. Uh, and he, Dr. Klausner spoke, and I'm telling you, I kid you not, I left that place with goosebumps over my whole body. Mm -hmm. He basically said, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that several types of cancer, mm -hmm. some of the worst ones out there, mm -hmm. are now officially, mm -hmm. not commercially yet, mm -hmm. but officially cured. Yeah, acute lymphoma, for example. Cured. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is the man responsible for this research. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And so uh, can you disclose what your funding situation is like in WISDO? Uh, I would say we've had a very substantial seed round after we came out of the accelerator, uh, an angel round. Um, you don't want to talk numbers, right? I'm okay to say it was a $7 million round. Seed. Seed. Wait, seed let, let me just put that in context here. A, a, an A or even a B, I mean, we were looking at the news before, $7 million is an A round. Seed in Israel is usually like what? Half a million, a million and a half, like... Seven million dollars seed. Mm -hmm. That was way pre-launch because you're only launching now. Yeah. I mean, you guys, have, you guys are onto something. We're onto something. Yeah. Amazing. How big is your team right now? Uh, we're around 15 people. Uh, we're looking, by the way, to grow. If you're a director of content uh, who's, you know, who's have, who has a, a few scars and a few victories, we're looking for you. Amazing. And um, we have to give a shout out. Yeah. Special shout out. Yeah. To the one and only, the magnificent, the fabulous Sarah Snow. Of course. Who's part of your team of and course. who's. I, I, Sarah Snow, if you're not familiar, is kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't even know what to call her. She's a master evangelist of Israeli tech. Uh, she's a master of video, and she posted, she posts content on your Facebook page. Yeah. Give me some numbers. So first of all, I, I'm her agent, so anyone who wants to talk to Sarah, you don't come through me. Um, <laughs> you're her I'm bouncer. Also, I'm also her assistant. <laughs> okay. Um, but yes, we've had uh, so far, you know, Sarah started working with us a couple of months back. Already we've had 27 million views uh, to the videos. Our videos basically celebrate our content, they celebrate our, com our community. 27 million? Yeah. How? Uh, well. No, I, I need to know, how do you do so, that? So I think, first of all, wisdom is something that people need and they connect to the stories that we bring. And we try to feature our heroes, people who come to the platform and basically pour all their wisdom into Amazing. it. Amazing. The movie that you've just seen, uh, I brought it today because of uh, us. You know, uh, you had tweeted an interview with Mr. Klausner, and we got a response. We got Isn't he a doctor? Yeah, Dr. Klausner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with, with, we got plenty of responses from, uh, from your um, uh, post at Facebook, and one of them was this guy that you saw in the video called Chris. And he said, look, can I use your platform for what my daughter has? He found you via my tweet? Yes. Oh, I love that. And he said, um, he said my, my child has OCD. He said, fine, let's try the platform. And he came in and he wrote a whole timeline wow. of the experience. He came to his support group. Collectively, they used the platform to basically build the whole path. And then they, con you know, they constructed milestones and steps. And for each step, they started contributing their hindsight wisdom. And that's what you see in the video. And that's what we are trying to make Amazing. many people in many verticals. So you said, we're talking about verticals. You said breast cancer. Give me, give me a couple others. So um, look, let's look at a, a more positive one, parenting, right? Great. First 12 months of parenting. You've had your first child. You're so happy, but everybody who's done it knows that the first few days are a bit, eh, you know, <laughs> and there are surprises along the way. The, the funny thing is, these are not surprises. These are things that happen. To everyone. And they happen to everyone. Uh, if you look at the divorce timeline, we spoke with divorcees, it is, it's, uh, it's amazing to see how uh, universal 80% uh, of the experience is. And people go through a lot of suffering today that we are trying to you know, diminish, make easy. Minimize, yeah, I love that. Um, uh, yeah. So you got, so we said cancer, breast cancer, we said parenting, div divorce. We've got 170 examples on the site right now. Wisdo.com, so. unbelievable. Yeah. Listen, Ido, we can, 
I mean, talk forever. for hours. I, this is, yeah. you know, everyone says they want to change the world. You guys are changing the world. Thank you. You're changing the world. And, and obviously the fact that Amazon seed investors and Rick Klausner and all these people you are on your board and are your investors, you know, that in and of itself is a testament that you guys are onto something, not big, astronomical, humongous, and, you know, any other uh, adjective you want to use. Listen, what can I tell you, man? I'm, I'm honored to, you know, A, be, be a friend. And you, as you know, I'm just going to say it on the air so we have witnesses. Anything I could ever do to help you guys in any capacity, I love what you're doing. I think the world needs what you're doing. And I don't think there's anybody else that's even coming close to what you're doing. So just keep at it. You know, I know you're working 26 hours a day right now. Uh, don't get tired because we need it. The world needs this. And I mean, just, just keep kicking butt, man. So I want to, first of all, thank you. You're welcome. For everything thank you're you. helping us with. I want to thank the team at Wisdom, um, everybody uh, there. Uh, we're led by many talented people. I will mention uh, our head of product, Tomer Lerner, our head of R&D, Odette Sharon. Uh, you mentioned Sarah there. I the, the genius, everyone. the genius. You have to mention the genius. Which one? Okay. Mr. Gaon. Gaon. I mentioned Gaon before. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. Boaz well, Gaon, man. Boaz well, Gaon, uh, a gifted man in many, many ways, uh, is leading the company. Um, yeah, so I want to thank everyone. I want to thank also uh, Iris Shaw, who's helping us. I want to thank Yam Regev. Hey, but who introduced you to Iris Shaw? No, I didn't introduce you, did I? You didn't. I didn't. You no. knew Iris Shaw before, yeah. Well, but I recommended you speak to Iris Shaw, maybe, I think. Good. Anyway, you guys are kicking butt. I don't know what else to say. Just keep it up, and uh, the world thanks you for what you're doing. And um, I'm looking forward to you guys really taking on the world's biggest challenges and you thank know, you. minimizing all of our pain and suffering. And, and again, on the positive side, helping us. Get through life transitions. Is that what you call it? Life transitions? Life challenges and opportunities, really. Life challenges and opportunities. And there are 170 examples on wisdom.com. I invite everyone to go in, start contributing. Everyone has life yeah. transitions. I don't care how perfect your life is. Everyone has life transitions. Go to wisdom.com, check out these challenges, see how you can contribute, build this thing out because the world needs it. Thank you very much, Ido. Thank you. Thank you.